Wow. Painted Ladies, uh, 1973. Uh, okay, so here was a song that came out of sort of my life, really, at that time. So here I was, the son of a former Baptist minister, now a university professor, philosophy professor. So I had lived a pretty sheltered life in the world of academe, and um, all of a sudden I was in a band playing just the hell holes of Ontario, sharing dressing rooms with strippers, which some of them were turning tricks on the side, so it wasn't all bad. Uh, but it was culture shock. Um, and when you're stuck in some dumpy hotel uh, in the middle of nowhere, playing really questionable social experience, uh, you miss home like the Dickens. So lyrically, the song sort of came out of, came out of that. You know, I'd wake up in the morning, you know, one of the strippers would be coming out of her room and you'd be heading down for breakfast together. And uh, so it was a real, uh, uh, it was a real culture shock for me. Now the actual song, nothing but really fond memories. We recorded that at RCA Studios on Mutual Street uh, in Toronto. I think it's been torn down now because we needed another parking lot. Eh? And uh, so we did it on night sessions because I had two kids by by the time uh, I signed my album deal with GRT. And I was working at CBC as a producer. So at nights, I went to RCA to record. And uh, the clavinet part did not appear until the recording sessions. I had written the song in my basement. They had these old TC-630s, they were called. It was a sound-on-sound -sound Sony tape recorder. So I could stack up harmonies and guitar parts. So I had the whole song together, with the exception of uh, bass and drums, and, uh, and the uh, clavinet was an idea of uh, John Lombardo's, who was uh, the producer for me on that. I didn't want to produce my own stuff, and uh, at that point anyway. And John Kapek, a wonderful writer who ends, ended up, he wrote uh, Rhythm of My Heart with Mark Jordan, uh, and a number of other uh, great songs for other artists. Uh, John played the clavinet on uh, Painted Ladies. So, uh, and, then, and then I stacked up all the harmonies just like I did at home on my TC-630. And then that song, I just watched it sail up the charts. I often wondered why the song didn't go farther than number 27 or 26 in Billboard. And then I read the book Hitman and I realized $250,000 had to change hands to break the top 20. And, uh, and then that was just such a revelation to me that I just thought, Oh, man, what a rotten business this is. Because we were top 10 in, in so many major cities. And I couldn't understand how we could be top 10 in all those cities and, ta and just number 27 in Billboard. It made no sense. And then when I was talking to uh, uh, Ross Reynolds the other day about this, he was the president of GRT in Canada, but the mother company in the United States uh, was Chess Janus Records that GRT, General Recorded Tape, had bought. And they were just cheapskates. They, they, wanted, they just sort of threw everything at the wall and they weren't, weren't willing to spend a penny on anything. And of course, no money would exchange hands. Uh, of course, if they'd chucked the, the, the 200 grand or whatever it was uh, in, the album would have been front racked and it would be a a totally different story but that's the uh, that's the nature of music business some days you need the uh, you have to uh, pave the road ahead with greenbacks and this part right here this is me imitating thinking about Pete Towns Townsend and won't get fooled again
Can you imagine it? We get to the start, one, two, three, four, and we're in, and I pressed the one key that note, and then I didn't know where to go. So I just sat there with it, thinking about what to do with it for a bit, and then did the run at the end of it. <laughs> 